So there's another quick video about Virtual DDA 2024 and an improvement that's been made to a feature in Virtual DDA 2024. And that's this one, improve drag and drop text and CSV in lists. And that was done in build 8336 earlier this month. So what's this all about? Well, as you can tell, it's an improvement of a previous feature. So let's look at the previous feature first, even though this is the new version. So the previous feature uh, was that you could drag and drop text files into a list or back in the day virtual folder and virtual DJ would check the local database for local track files and figure out if it has them and then make the, it, it readily available in this list. So let me look at this old one first. And it says Michael Jackson dash thriller, Prince dash kiss and Lizzo dash about damn time. So three tracks that we now try and drag and drop into this test list here. And as you can see by the icons, uh, it has found all of them. That also means that I can actually load them and I can of course also play them if I wanted to. A little detail, you can see this is all caps and that tells me because I know my, uh, my database that this is probably an old version. So if I was just to search for Thriller, you can see I have that track quite a few times. Remove the search again. So it may not be this one that I want. That could be an old, an old version. So how do I figure that out? Well, I can look at the tag editor and I can look at the file path and I can see, yes, this is in fact an old version. So I could replace it with a better version. This is only 192k uh, BPS, right? So not the best uh, result that would give me. Uh, but that's just a, a little detail. So you can swap them out if it picks the wrong one, if you have multiple ones of the same track. But back to the new feature. So this was the old feature. It's been able to do this for a few years now. So what's the improvement? Well, let's look at a new, uh, a new text file here called make my list new.text. And the three top ones are the same. So that should give us the same result. And then that's one that has switched the name uh, with the artist. And it has one where it has uh, put in a tap instead of a, sp a space and a dash. Um, and that's basically the new feature, at least part of it. It can now figure out if you've made these mistakes or variations, if you will, in your in your list, in your text file. So let's try doing it. We also have two more down here. We'll get back to those. So I take this one instead and I drag it in here. And by looking at the icon, you can see that it has found one, two, three, four, five of these tracks. It has found about damn time, three times, because there were three times in the list. So that means that it has figured out, sorry, uh, just open it again. So it means that it has figured out that it was the same track, even it was when it was switched, and even if there was a tap there. But it also means that it hasn't figured out that there's a spelling mistake here, and it couldn't find Crybaby. That's because I don't have that track. But all the other stuff, it has just figured out for me. So that's the, that's the main part of the improvement. And then, of course, if it can't find it, like this one, you can simply qu uh, click uh, this magnifying glass to have it do a search, like this. And it did a search, and it found it because, well, um, it wasn't that big of a spelling mistake. So it found this, and I can, of course, include that instead if I want to. I can do a manual search or whatever. So I could drag and drop this if I wanted to. But let me just go back to, to this one and then click the other one, Crybaby. And that's fair enough because I simply don't have the track. Click it and get a search. And now you can say, well, title has it, Deezer has it. So I can simply drag and drop one of these into here. And now that's part of my, uh, my track uh, list here. And I can, of course, then remove this one and also remove this one because I already have it in the list, right? So now I have a function in a uh, list that I can use and including this one, which is, of course, an online one. So when I drag, that up, drag and drop that into here, it'll take a little while longer than the local ones. But other than that, it just works, right? So that's uh, the main part of the feature. Then there was a little, uh, a little extra thing. I kill these two of them which is that it can also read other formats. So instead of it being a text file, it could also be a TSV file, for instance. That's a tab-separated uh, tab file. So let me see if I can open that in something. 
like notepad here. So you can see it has this, but a whole file format is that. But that doesn't matter, it can still understand it. So I can drag and drop that in and it works. So I can, again, load and play it if I wanted to. And the final one was actually a CSV file. So you see, it actually wanted to open that in Excel because, well, it's a comma separated file and Excel can read that. But I don't want to do that. So let me just open it in Notepad so you can see it. So same, same thing, but comma separated, right? So now I drag and drop that one in there, and that also works and can be loaded and played. That was already loaded. Loaded and played like that. So that was basically the new feature. It can now understand to uh, if you've made small mistakes or variations in your list, and it can also figure out if you're using CSV files instead or tab-separated files. So that's a pretty cool new feature, and it makes it uh, even easier to use the stuff to to get your lists generated really fast based on just text files from different places.